island's mine! By Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me! When thou camest first, thou strokest me and made much of me, wouldst give me water with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night. Caliban, for instance, the designer hadn't come up with anything yet. I didn't really know. I love a Caliban who um, isn't, uh, like they see him as a monster, but then we, the audience, and then the other characters see his humanity. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I was considering like the sort of a big lumbering fella, you know, and then um, auditions came and Kit Bulla, who's a little wiry rock climber, maybe weighs 135 pounds, uh, just nailed it. He was just like, he got the scariness of the character. Like, I felt like he is potentially dangerous, but he's also like a boy. You know, he's very um, lovable in a way. So, so that's what happens in auditions. You ask about casting, uh, uh, actors cast themselves a, in a mysterious and, and uh, magical way. Being a rock climber, uh, I feel like, you know, pretty in tune with my body and my movements, mm. and um, so I tried to utilize that in my portrayal. Uh, I found this video on YouTube of this guy, I don't remember his name, but I was like, okay, Caliban's lived on this island his whole life, in the wild, so it's probably moose, like an animal maybe, I don't know. So I watched his patterns and took a lot from that and uh, that was really helpful in in taking what I am able to do because I rock climb, mm -hmm. move my body, be flexible, and then channel it into specific movements that illuminated Caliban's character. He's one of Shakespeare's like weirdest characters, I don't know. There's a lot of description about him but at the same time, like, no description about him. So, approaching him, I found the best way was for me to do a lot of research and reading. I, like, went on JSTOR and, like, was reading article after article, like, who is Caliban? Like, what is, what is he about? And there are a lot of different perspectives about, like, what he represents and how he should be portrayed. Figuring out his character was something I had to communicate with Denise, the director, about too, because he can represent a lot of different things, but in the context of the story and like the message that is trying to be communicated, you can emphasize different things about him. So it was a mixture of what could he represent and then what is it that we're trying to focus on in this particular production. I think also the Caliban relationship with Prospero this time through was very, very much more parental. Like usually uh, in the past productions that I have either worked on or directed, he was more, uh, he was just more of a brute. And we talked a whole lot with Kit who is, because he's a rock climber, he's really in touch with nature. And we talked a lot about how Caliban, why would Caliban not think he should mate with Miranda? Like it was just a natural impulse. And Prospero saw it as, he said um, that it's seek to violate the honor of my child, which means he did not rape her. Uh, he was just wanting to make more Calibans. That's what males and females do in the natural mindset. So I did not want to see him as a criminal in this production. and. And even though he's pretty dirty and, and reportedly smelly, <laughs> he's not a criminal. He's just a natural. He was raised, you know, in nature and doing the natural thing. He mirrors Prospero in a pretty significant way um, in that, you know, as Prospero, the play unfolds, Prospero's trying to get his revenge the whole time. He's been seeking revenge for years and years. And then by the end, he realizes that what he really needs to do is forgive. Uh, we have a long conversation about that uh, in rehearsal because so many people, when they read the play sort of at, at face value, they assume that Caliban has always been in captivity and been the slave and being punished. It's not true. They've been on the island for a dozen years. So Miranda was three and 
Caliban, we sort of estimated, was maybe around five or six when his mom died. So he was a part of the family. He even says it, you loved me, uh, and, and, and I lived with you, and, and you took care of me. And so it's when Miranda matures um, and goes into puberty that Caliban sees that, that now she's a woman, and he uh, uh, attacks her. At the beginning of the play, he's very angry, he feels trapped, he feels abandoned um, and frustrated that Prospero, who didn't live on this island originally, has come and like subjugated him. Um, and so ultimately I think that what Caliban really wants is love and acceptance. Um, and so by the end of the play, since Prospero has decided to forgive, he also forgives Caliban. And Caliban, by witnessing Prospero's example, then realizes that that's what he wants as well. He wants acceptance. He wants to forgive Prospero. Within the language and within the plays of Shakespeare are superhuman situations um, and very high stakes, like emotional situations that mm -hmm. uh, people in the world today, in the contemporary world, are still experiencing whether it be like struggle for power, uh, love, true love versus, you know, marriage and uh, society and rules and hierarchy and um, all of that. So I think that when Shakespeare's done right, it can illuminate the um, humanity um, that we all have in common and the various like situations that we can find ourselves in and it can bring such magnitude to that and I think it's really really cool to see and, and to relate with the characters that Shakespeare wrote so long ago.